I mean, you guys, come on, <laughs> just look at this guy. Today we're gonna to be looking at Simon Pissini. He's one of my favorite painters of all time and he's currently alive, he's an alive master. He paints at the level of John Singer Sargent, Fetch and uh, Frank Frazetta, I mean, and he actually, in my opinion, exceeds some of those individuals. His technique is just so gorgeous in the way that he captures light and shadow and detail and just the way that he does everything is so masterful. And it all has this particular style to it. It's so, so gorgeous. And today we're gonna to be looking at how he actually achieves the effects that he does, specifically his light effects and just his general principles when he's breaking down a subject. I'm gonna be going over four main things that he does. And that's light shapes and design. And then the second is layering and how he actually gets that glow effect in all of his paintings. Third one is detail. And the fourth one is faces and how he treats human subjects. So. Without further ado, let's get right into it. It's gonna be interesting. I hope you guys learn something and can apply it to your own work. Anyway, so this is actually the first painting that I ever saw from Simon Pacini. I was just on Instagram and I was scrolling along subconsciously and I saw this image and it was just, it just took me back for a second. I was like, who is this artist? This is such a beautiful work of art. And, <laughs> This exemplifies a lot of the great things about his technique. What he manages to do is that he does something that's absolutely technically amazing. And then he also imbues it with a sense of mundane narrative. So it's just this normal scene of this girl in a bakery, but it's painted in such a way that it's just gorgeous. And we're gonna be analyzing how he does that. So the first major thing that you're gonna be seeing in his work is that he simplifies everything into really simple value shapes. So if we go over here, we can see that. If you squint your eyes on the subject, you can see that this painting is only two shapes. And you might be saying, Chad, what, like, I see way more shapes than two shapes. Okay, well, squint your eyes and just really look at it. And you'll see that there's that large dark shape above the figures. And then there's that way bigger light shape. And it's basically only two big shapes, the, the simple composition. Now, when you're actually thinking about composition and how you're gonna be creating an impactful work for people, you have to think about it absolutely across all sorts of human communication because that's what art is, just communicating to people subconsciously. And if you're doing a speech, would you make the title 60 words long? No, you wouldn't. You'd simplify into one or two or maybe three words if you're feeling a little bit extra. But what he does here is that he simplifies the speech into two words, into light and dark, right? And when you can encapsulate a very complicated subject, which is an entire thing that you're trying to say, an entire scene, and you can simplify it into the title, right? Into these two simple shapes, it makes the composition so much better. And this isn't unique to some Pacini. I mean, artists have been doing this forever, Rembrandt, Sargent, whatever. You have a really, you have a really dark shape, and then you have a you know, usually a much bigger light shape or a really small light shape and a much bigger dark shape or something like that. But it's always simplified in these, this very simple structure. If you can actually see just, and you can see everywhere else, you know, you, you have some tiny dark shapes right here. And, you know, obviously the woman right here, which is what, you know, captures your attention to the figure here. But I mean, <laughs> other than all of that, the really basic shape is this really big dark shape and then the really big light shape. And if you can manage to do that, it's going to be so much more attractive for your viewers. Now, the next thing that he manages to do, which is extremely unique to him, is his ability to do this thing where he layers and he makes something glow. Now, when you're making something glow, it's a very simple, simple formula. Now, I've gone over this in some of my other videos about how Sargent did that with his charcoal portraits, so I suggest checking those out if you haven't yet. But... I'll give you the low and dirty here. What you need is a dark value, a light value, and then you need some sort of light escaping into the dark value, light escaping the form of the shape that you're creating. And you can see here that he takes this to a whole new, another level. I've never seen anybody do it quite the way that he does it. It's very unique. What he does is that he takes these really thin washes, and this is actually, this is a perfect example of how he does it. See this window right here? See how it just looks like it's there's this ambiance to it, like there's there's this light just flowing out into the room. The way that he does that is that he uses these really thin washes. So 
you can see actually underneath this area right here that there is something that he painted under there. There's another color blob and that he passed over it, but he didn't pass over it in an opaque way with a more a la prima technique. He thinned it down and he used transparent colors. And what that did is that it creates this, this really thin layer. And when you layer things up, what happens is that the shape becomes more indiscriminate and it's, it's hard to actually see exactly what's what and it creates this foggy feeling. So you can see that he's just generally laying on color notes and just like slopping them about. And then what that does is that it kind of builds this, this field where you can see that this is a window obviously, but it's not super cut and exact like a photograph would be. And that creates this light effect. So what you do is that you'd originally just paint this all, if you see this uh, dark shape right here, this was all painted actually the same exact value. Now you can see the streak coming in right here from the, uh, the right, but this is all the same value. And what he did is that he would, he, at least I'm assuming I, I haven't seen the work in progress for this one exactly, but if you do enough oil painting techniques, you'll start to pick up on these things. He paints that color up and then he grabs a transparent thin amount of paint and he paints right over it. And what that does is that it leaves some of the value escaping, but it's not so bright that it looks like an extension of the shape, right? It looks like a light effect. So it just barely raises up the value there and it makes it look really, really gorgeous. Now he does this layering effect with all of his colors too. You can see like, I mean, you just have this green blob right there. You have this purple right there. And then under here, you can see this blue, you know what I mean? So you see this purple and everything's kind of flickering. And the way that he does this again is by layering. So he layers a purple note right here, right? And then he layers a green note on top of that. And when it's all very thin and you're not actually making things in front of one another, but you know, there's some see-through gaps there. What it does is that it gives this really nice textural effect. Now, some people really like that effect. Some people don't necessarily. Sargent, particularly, going back to him, he would use more opaque colors. So if you're looking at his work, you're not gonna be able to see necessarily what's underneath it, but it's, it's your own style. I mean, this guy does it really beautifully. It shows that there's not any particular direction to take these techniques. But an uh, interesting thing too about his layering effect is that when he's dragging out a light, it creates these kind of flares. And can, you can see that kind of happening right here where, for example, like on this edge right there, you can see that he's dragging the paint and it creates these little streak marks. And what that streak does is that it softens up the edge a little bit. And when you have softer edges, it's gonna create this more dreamlike effect. If you've ever seen a painting that looks like a dream or a memory or something like that, that's usually because all the edges are soft. And one way to create these soft edges is by not painting opaquely one over another. It's by creating these thin passes of transparent paint. And what that does is that it creates this edge, but it's a suggested edge. It's not actually super, super hard. Now he does in some areas, he uses hard edges and I'm gonna go over that next. And it's critical to his painting style because if you make everything soft, it's gonna look formless and it's gonna look a little bit too dreamy and happy, you know? So, but the way that he pulls all this together is just so gorgeous. And the next thing that we're gonna be looking at is detail. So you can see that in his paintings, there's not a lot of detail, so to say. On first pass, it looks like there is. And then you go on second pass and you see that it's all brushwork and you, you think to yourself, oh, well, it's just, there's no detail there. But then on third pass, you look even closer and there is detail there. So you can see like in this lettering, he actually is detailing all of it. The sergeant probably wouldn't have done this uh, painter like that or even a more impressionist painter. A lot of people say that he's an impressionist. I, I don't really buy it because impressionists don't use these darker values and they use color to a higher extent. But you can see that he's actually painting in these tiny strokes. I mean, look at how tiny this detail is right there. You can see the little flare. And when he's making these architectural lines, he actually uses a, a ruler from what it looks like. I mean, all of his lines are so straight and he uses these, these little detail marks. For example, this sink is a really good example. He uses this these black lines right here which an impressionist wouldn't necessarily do. And it's it's almost like you have the biggest shapes and then you have the very smallest shapes. So you have these big color notes that he's creating with these thin washes. And then on top of that, you build on these lines. And what that does is that it creates this dreamlike effect, but you're still solid, you're still there in reality, it still looks like something. If it's a little too washed out, you're gonna be 
it's gonna look a little too abstract, right? But he pulls it back with these detail notes and like this obviously looks like he did it with a ruler. It's, it's really hard to pull this off just freehand. I've tried it. You can if you do it over and over and over again, but it looks a little bit too, uh, looks a little bit too abused, for lack of a better word. It's better to just go in there with a ruler and that's, that's what it looks like he does. But he pulls in enough detail and enough sharp edges in certain areas that all these loose edges you can really enjoy with with the full range you know the interesting thing about edges especially in his work is that people know that you need a range of values people know that you need a range of colors you can't have everything too monochrome or you know too bright or too dark and that the difference between those two is what creates an interest in a painting that's that's what beginners know that's what everybody knows that's what you're first taught but people don't talk about edges in that way People don't talk about using the entire range of your edges to use loss edges and extremely hard edges. And he's using almost both extremes, but none almost in the middle, like super hard edge right here, super soft edge right here, super hard edge with that detail, completely like almost lost into the spatula here. And what that does is it just creates this illusion of detail that it's that there's detail there but it's just really not so you get all the benefits of the light effects where you get the soft edges but you get all the benefits of the detail where it actually looks like the thing you're trying to represent and you can see even in here i mean talk about uh detail without showing any detail i mean <laughs> he shows all this molding by just the suggestion of these brush strokes but they're deliberately placed in their small shapes i mean that's what detail technically is is just small shapes so it's not like he's afraid of it. Like you look here, right here in the, I mean, look at how beautiful it is. The banner just goes in with this tiny little stroke and then it just disappears, right? And then it reappears again just a little bit, but it's just a suggestion of line. He even loses it right there. Bam, that's just so gorgeous. So if you were only painting the big shapes and you weren't using any of the tiny little details, then it would lose a little bit, a certain quality to it, right? But he's not putting detail everywhere. Some people get very trigger happy and the problem is that they'll put, these streamer lines, for example, like everywhere, you know, like this entire wall right here, you can see just vacant. There's almost nothing there. There's the, the general color passes, but he's not adding on every single brick and every single nook and cranny. So that's another interesting thing that I saw is that he'll use straight ruler lines and he'll also use detail. He's not afraid of it in certain areas to make them pop, to make it a little more interesting. And the third one is faces. So this is a good example. You can see that the face is actually decently carved out. I mean, look at it compared to the pants. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's you know, one or two brush strokes just right there with a thin stroke. And what that does is that it doesn't make it too, look too abstract because if you make the face as abstract as this pant leg, for example, it's gonna take you out of the painting because we're naturally inclined as human beings to d detect problems with others' faces. So you can get really loosey-goosey kind of like Sargent did and like Simon does with all these figures and all the, the landscapes and you know the, the grass or the streets or whatever in the shadows. But when it comes to faces, you need to make sure your edge work is correct. And you also need to make sure that all the proportions are correct. Everything needs to be correct. Like, I mean, look at this guy. Like there is a decent amount of detail there. It's not just nothingness, not just two paint strokes, right? He took the time and as, as loose painters, a lot of the time, I think people get a little bit too caught up in being loose everywhere. You don't need to be loose everywhere. You just need to be loose in the places that need a little attention, right? Now, it's beautiful if you can be loose in a face, but a lot of the time, the circumstance will dictate that. For example, you can look at, like, this is pretty loose if you zoom in there on the actual painting. It's, it's you know, it's really suggested, but right here, if you were as loose with all the edges, it would be a little bit disturbing. So make sure that your figures, the faces are well carved out and rendered and the external elements can be very loosey goosey. And that's, that's what he tends to do. And here's another example of that detail, by the way, look at, look at this, like the bars there, just these, these thin little lines. Like he has such a range of shapes too. That's, that's, what's really interesting about this guy is that He'll start out with these big blocky shapes, and that's what we're gonna look at later with his Instagram work in progresses that he posted. But he has these giant, giant shapes. Like, look at how big this this dark shape is, right? And then he has these giant purple shapes, for example, or the, these big shadow shapes. But then he also has these tiny little detail shapes, right? And it just adds that a little bit of sparkle to the painting. Just enough though, just enough so that you're kind of there, you know what I mean? And you can see the detail, but it's not exactly 
and you're not bashed over the head with it. I mean, you guys need to follow this guy. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. I mean, look at his, uh, look at this. This is just gorgeous. Like, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this, you know? It's very abstract, but it's very realistic the same, in the same sense. He's even using these thin passes kind of on faces. You can see a little bit of stuff coming through here, right? You can see the, this texture work. There's a little bit of detail, but he has these really large shapes at the same time. All the edges are correct. Like, look at how soft the edges on the forearm, especially. It's just such a round, it's a very round form, except for around the bony marks where you're going to get those, those sharper edges. Very, very soft right here, but he's hard when he needs to be, like right here on that, on that little curve of the, it looks like the coat that he's wearing. And then he's very soft where he needs to be. So it's it's all just impeccable. He's very deliberate about what he does. And if you look at these uh, work in product, and also here's a here's a digital rendition. I mean, like he just, he does everything. Just an amazing artist. Good example here too of the escaping value thing that I was talking about. I mean, just, <laughs> just look at, you, I could just stare at this guy's brushwork for hours. I mean, seriously, just, just look at this, this is gorgeous. It just passes right through. And the way that he did this is I don't think he actually built up the coat and then streaked it across lazily. I think what he does is that he starts with these giant color notes and just the general shapes. And then, so this, this outside was just his general idea of the general block of his coat, if that makes sense. And then on top of that, he would add on all the detail. So what you're left with, but he wouldn't fix this part. Like he wouldn't make it perfect and, and you know, like dark and with his background, make the sleeve very edge cut. He would actually leave a little bit of that under the underwork that he did. And it creates this kind of coming into being look that's just so beautiful. I mean, it's just so gorgeous, so amazing. This guy is just, if you want to feel bad about your art, you should check out, <laughs> look at this guy's art. I mean, even like, look at this couch, man. This is actually a great example of his work in progress, right? So he's starting out with a decent drawing but he blocks in these colors. Like look at how he's blocking in that giant green, green splotch, all this, this red, and he's using very thin, thin stuff. If he had used a lot of oil paint with medium in it, and it was super glossy and opaque, you wouldn't get this effect. You wouldn't quite get this effect. Now, if this isn't the effect you're going for, then use, you know, more medium. But if you want thinner washes and you want this, this kind of transparent layering effect, you need to use thinner paint, probably with paint thinner. I'm assuming that's how he does all of this. This is one that's just so gorgeous. Another thing that you'll see with his work is that he'll use colors in a very deliberate way. In a, in the way that it actually falls off in nature. So you'll see that when it comes from light to dark, it goes away from yellow on the color spectrum. Marco Bucci made a really good video about this, about how light works, but you'll see that it goes from yellow to orange. See that? And then it goes to red. So it's actually following this very deliberate path on the color wheel. And I don't know where he picked that up from, but he definitely didn't see this particularly in real life. Like there's no, nobody's gonna see this in real life. That's what that's what's so amazing is that he can take, and this is probably from a photograph I'm assuming, but he took, <laughs> like he, he took this real life experience and then he just made it something so amazing you know, with all these light effects. And he was taking things that actually exist in real life, like light streaks and little dust particles, you can see with these little suggested lines here. And he's making it hit. And then he's also grabbing that glow where he was originally building up all the layers. And then it, it, it just makes for such a beautiful artwork. This one in particular really shows all these things that I've been talking about, like the detail in this railing, but then the soft, soft edges right here on uh, this, this figure here. And then with the colors are just gorgeous as well. Just amazing work. Uh, here's a good example, again, of him blocking it in. So do you see how loose everything is? Like he has his under sketch, but then he just slops in all the color notes. So this is a very general color note. It's just kind of, it's like a, it's just an underwash. And then on top of that, he's able to actually build up all the detail on it, right? But you can still see the original part of the image, right? And it creates this interesting texture. So depending on what material you're actually painting, you're gonna to wanna to use more texture slash less texture. Like for water, for example, you can see that he uses more opaque colors because just water is not gonna have as much texture. It's, it's water, it's, it's, it's a lot smoother, it's smoother to the eye as well. But, you know, he just uses more Al Prima right here. And 
easy to use layering in different areas. But anyway, I just wanted you guys to see them because he hasn't gotten a lot, of, at least as much exposure as I think he deserves, quite frankly. he's His work is, I mean, in my opinion, it surpasses Sergeant, at least in interest. I mean, just gorgeous work. I highly suggest checking him out. Anyways, I hope you guys learned at least a thing or two from my breakdown. I hope it helps your own art, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for coming in and watching, and go make something beautiful. I'll see you later.